I'm Brian Kanda from Malawi, uh, and I really appreciate for giving a chance to, to present on the topic, effect of boron and cashew fertilizer application, harvesting dates, and storage techniques on seed quality, yield, and yield components of groundnuts. Uh, in the first place, I have to say it out that I'll present on, on the, uh, on the yield and yield components as on seed because my, my major my major area of interest I'm looking at like seed quality in terms of uh, uh, in germination. So but I have that component also that I will look at the yield and yield components. So for today's presentation, I'll present on on the yield and yield components of groundnuts. That's the effect of a uh, application, harvesting dates and storage. Yeah, so this is my presentation outline. I'll take you all the way from introduction to uh, what will be the next at these plans. Uh, as an introduction, groundnut is a, a common legume uh, crop belonging to the family Fabaceae and it is commonly grown in Malawi as well. And it's very important as uh, it, is, uh, it is a source of uh, proteins like to, 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 to each and every organism, as well as the homes of the Ghana's cells uh, uh, can be used as a livestock feed. So in Malawi, the average annual cultivated area for groundnuts for the period of 1991, 206, was 121,000 hectares, which accounted for 27% of the total regular land. Uh, from 2003 to 2012, the average annual cultivated area for groundnut was 260,000 hectares. And this accounted for 34% uh, of the average total cultivated area under regions. Uh, so in Malawi, According to Malawi government, there is actually low production of uh, groundnuts among smallholder farmers. And uh, currently the potential yield for groundnuts in Malawi is uh, 2,000 to 2,500 kilograms per hectare. But uh, in real cases, you actually observe that uh, farmers yield as low as uh, 500 to 800 kilograms of groundnuts per hectare. So there are so many factors that actually limit yield and, and seed quality, of which some of them, like for the factor that actually limit yield, we have uh, the nutrition status of the soil and the, so many others, as well as the environmental factor, because we have several who have genetic, uh, genetic factors and environmental factors. So there are so many factors that affect that. And the seed quality, yeah, the, you, you also, you also, Observe that, that that's, uh, these farmers or even the seed companies, they do straw the seeds using different ways. So that also can affect seed quality as well. Uh, so in the tropics generally, the soils are associated with low levels of calcium and boron. As a result, you, uh, we, we always experience the problems of uh, uh, empty pods, uh, pod with shivered seed, pod feeling depressed, bracket, uh, bracket premiums, and pod rot. So these are some of the problems that we do uh, in car uh, here in the tropics. As well as, if you look at the cash amount of toxin contamination, uh, there, is, there is actually a very important point on a cash amount, that that if, if the soils have enough cash amount, it will actually reduce the levels of aflatoxin in governance production. So harvesting time, about harvesting time, uh, it is observed that harvesting time influences uh, germination, vigor, viability, and storability. And this actually depends on maturity time. So at optimum maturity, better quality seed is attained. And again, when you look at seed quality, I mean seed storage, uh, smallholder farmers and seed companies do store their seed in different ways. 
such as uh, can, uh, seed can be, the ghana seeds can be stored maybe in shell or the seeds can be st uh, stored while they're shelled. So because of that, uh, this has initiated a research to evaluate the effects uh, of borrowing and calcium application, harvesting dates and seed storage techniques on seed quality yield and yield components of gunners. But I have to say it out again, as I just said, that I will look on how these affect the yield and yield components in the meantime. So the, the objectives, the main objective was to evaluate the effects of borrowing and calcium fertilizer application Investing dates and storage techniques on seed quality, yield and yield components of groundnuts, and the specific objectives to evaluate the effects of pollen on seed quality, yield and yield components of groundnuts, and also to evaluate the effects of calcium on seed quality, yield and yield components of groundnuts. The rest two, these ones, I will, I'm still working on them as I'm not yet done. Uh, the search hypothesis. So, bone application in groundnuts improves seed uh, viability, yield, and yield components. And also, calcium application in groundnuts improves seed quality, yield, and yield components of uh, groundnuts. The materials and methods. So, the experiments were, were actually done in two sites of Chitese Search Station and Horizon Farms, Irongwe, here in Malawi. And the, those are the information about the uh, about the places uh, which which are used to which are used a GPS uh, a GPS device to, to have that information, and the research was uh, was conducted in the 2020-2021 cropping season. So I had also the baseline soil characteristics, and that table shows uh, some of the baseline soil characteristics like the pH, organic matter calcium, uh, boron, and texture. Uh, treatments. So I had actually uh, four, uh, fa uh, three factors. Uh, the, uh, the main factor was variety, where I had two varieties, Chitara and CG9. Chitara is a small seeded, and CG9 is a large seeded. And then uh, the harvesting dates, where I have three levels, Early harvested, on time harvesting, and the late harvesting. And then the fertilizer, which is a sub support, where I had four levels no fertilizer, which was the control. Then I have the boron applied. Uh, boron was applied at 560 grams per hectare. Then cashew applied, which was applied at 200 kilograms per hectare. Then I had pro, uh, boron and cashew applied, uh, they are mixed. So it was uh, a randomized complete block design arranged in split split plot design. Planting. So both varieties, Chitara and CG9, were planted at high plant densities with the 266,667 and 177,778 plants per hectare, respectively. Uh, data collection. So yield and yield components parameters. Uh, we are collected, such as uh, plant height, canopy width, uh, pod yield, and so many others. So that's actually the, the fig that shows the amount of rainfall that was received in the uh, cropping season 2020-2021. And uh, from the fig, it is observed that uh, uh, Horizon received a huge amount of rainfall as compared to it is a search station. Results and discussion. So, right from this table one, it was observed that uh, it was observed that there were no significant differences uh, between uh, there are no significant differences in terms of canopy weed of groundnuts at five, eight, and 11 weeks of planting. That was at Horizon. Uh, this is because it is reported that uh, when, 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 you, when the plants are at five weeks, at may, maybe at least 30 days, it is, it is said that uh, the plants, all of them, 
they they actually receive the same uh, environmental factors. So there is uh, there is that uh, there is there is actually high growth of all of the plants. So actually, you can't. Uh, uh, some, some, most of the times you can't observe the significant differences. So from this explanation that I've explained right here, it's like all the tables for the plant canopy width had the same results. Uh, canopy width of ground and five faith weeks are stayed the same. There are no significant differences so far that we observed. And again, with this one plant height of ground nuts varieties at five, eight and 11 weeks after after planting at stage site, again, there were no significant differences observed among the, among the, uh, the plants. Uh, dry pod yield per hectare at Horizon Farm. So I had also to, to do the analysis on this so that I see if it tries had an effect on, on the dry pod yield of groundnuts. And the sure it was observed that uh, fertilizer had a significant a significant effect on uh, the pod yield, where, where, where the gardeners which were applied with the uh, boron, cashem, and boron and cashem, that is had had yielded high in terms of pod yield as compared to as compared to the control which was not applied with uh, with the fertilizer. So this 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 is the result from the yield part that I've explained. Uh, I have I have presented. And next time I'll present on the other parameters as I'm still working on them. So what next? Uh, next, it will be the variation of seed quality where I will evaluate seed quality in terms of seed germination, uh, seed size and seed color. And again, storage techniques on seed quality. I also work with uh, how, how the seed, uh, how, how, it's like I will, I will store the seeds, both the shade one and the unshared one for five months, and then I'll carry the uh, evaluate. I'll carry the germination test so that I see if the storage has an effect on uh, on seed quality. And again, I have to say that the search is going to be repeated in the 2021-2022 cropping season. End of presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Brian. And we have time for questions. Any questions from the audience, Brian? All right, welcome. One question I have, Brian, is as far as seed storage and what the growers are using, is most of the seed that they're using, is it saved by the farmers themselves or is the seed being stored and then resold to the farmers where you are? And it's, it, I guess the question comes down to who is most responsible for ensuring the quality of storage conditions? But is it the farmers themselves or is it the uh, buyers who then resell the seed to this to the farmers? Uh, actually, the ones who are responsible for the seed storage, yes, all of us were responsible for the good storage of groundnuts, but uh, but uh, the ones who are most importantly uh, like responsible are the, the ones like the seed companies where they have to store the seed or even the breeder themselves, they have to store their seeds uh, like in a proper manner, so that they should maintain their germination, uh, their germination, their high the germination percentage. Otherwise, right now there is that problem of low seed germination in the fields. Even if the farmers can buy the seeds from uh, from the seed company, the certified the certified seed, you see that the still more in the field on the ground, those seeds don't germinate well. So, yeah, each, generally each and everyone is responsible for that especially for this, uh, the big city companies and the breeders. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Brian. And that uh, we have maybe one question to see. Uh, this question comes from Abraham Fulmer. Any idea how diverse the baseline soil levels for calcium and boron across Malawi and how would you develop a general re recommendation based upon your results? So any ideas on how diverse the baseline soil levels for calcium and boron are there in Malawi where you are? Uh, thank you for the question. So far, uh, I actually, I can say this is the best level of cashew and bone in, soil, uh, uh, in the soils of Malawi, but I've taken note of that. I will do a search on that so that, but uh, most of the times when we, we conduct the, uh, 
uh, the soil analysis, you actually observe that if you compare the results and, and the results in the root regions, you, you actually observe that the soils are low in calcium and boron as, as compared to, to, yeah, to others. Okay, thank you. And that's the time we have for this presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian, for being with us today. Thank you a lot.